Use a slide marker to highlight the surface on which the smear is made, if frosted slides are not available. Preparation of Blood Smear Select few 3 to 4 clean, grease free glass slides. Place them on the working table. Choose another glass slide with a smooth edge. Keep it aside as the spreader. Place a drop of blood on a glass slide at one end by bringing the punctured finger in contact with glass slide or blood drop can be placed using a dropper if the venous blood is used. Note, position of blood drop. The position of the blood drop should be approximately 1 cm from the end of the slide, opposite labeling end. Alternatively, a distance of 1 cm from the label or frosted part of the slide can be chosen. Hold the slide by the narrow side between the thumb and forefinger of one hand at the end farthest from the frosted end or proximal end. Hold the spreader slide between the thumb and forefinger of the other hand at the frosted end. Blood pickup by spreader. Place the spreader on the slide in front of the drop at an angle of 30 to 45 degrees. Move the spreader slide backwards so as to touch the drop of blood and hold there till the blood has spread along the angle between the two slides by capillary action. Once the blood is spread along the entire edge, move the spreader forward at a steady rate, at a fairly fast speed and at a 30 to 45 degree angle until all blood has been spread into a film. The smear is air dried by waving them in the air. Once air dried, examine it for its quality. A well prepared smear has the following characteristics Gross. It covers almost the entire width in about 3 to 4 cm length of the slide. It is neither too thin nor too thick. It is uniform in thickness. A thick smear, when placed on a white background, appears red. It is tongue-shaped with no tails at the end. There are no striations or air gaps in the smear. Microscopic The smear is single cell thick with not much overlapping of the cells. The cells are uniformly distributed. Cleaning of smear the slides with the smears are kept on two horizontal rods kept over the sink. Leishman stain is added drop by drop over the smear so as to fully cover it and kept for two minutes, fixation time. Note the number of drops poured. At the end of two minutes, dilute the stain with an equal number of drops of buffered water at pH 6.8. Distal water may be used in case of non-availability of buffered water. The mixture is allowed to stand for 15 minutes. Staining time. Gently, intermittently blow air over the stain to facilitate mixing with the help of empty dropper or pasta pipette. This also prevents the precipitation of stain particles. Note, the fixation time and staining time are variable. 
They have to be ascertained by trials in the laboratory. At the end of 15 minutes, pour the mixture off the slide. Wash the smear under a thin stream of running tap water till the smear becomes pale. Ideally, buffered water should be used for washing the slide. The slide is held slanting below the stream and water is allowed to flow over the stream. The stream should not strike the smear directly or else it may be washed off. Note, smear can be immersed in reagent-filled coplin jars. The incidence of formation of precipitate is less. The stained smear is air-dried and focused under the microscope, low power, for the examination of the smear. Examination of stained smear Assessment of the quality of the smear A well-prepared and well-stained smear has the following characteristics. Gross It covers almost the entire width and about 3 to 4 cm length of the slide. It is neither too thin nor too thick. It is uniform in thickness. It is tongue-shaped with no tails at the end. There are no striations or air gaps in the smear and after staining it appears pale pink. Examination of Stained Smear A well-prepared and well-stained smear has the following characteristics. Microscopic The smear is single-cell thick with not much overlapping of the cells. The cells are uniformly distributed. A properly prepared and stained blood film should be pink in its thin part and show a purple or blue tint in the thicker parts. Microscopically, the red blood cells should be pink and the nuclei of the white blood cells more purple than blue. There should be no or minimal precipitation and staining should be uniform throughout the slide. The blood cells should be free from vacuoles. At least one leukocyte is seen per high power, X100 field. Selecting an ideally stained peripheral smear. Take an ideally stained peripheral smear, a properly prepared and stained blood film or blue tint in the thicker parts. Microscopic examination. Focus the chosen smear under low power of the microscope, 10x, for assessing the quality of the smear. The smear should be single cell thick with not much overlapping of the cells. The cells should be uniformly distributed. After assessing the quality of a smear under low power, examine the smear under the oil immersion by placing a drop of cedar wood oil on the smear on the apex side. The red blood cells should be pink. The nuclei of the white blood cells more purple than blue. The blood cells should be free from vacuoles. Staining should be uniform throughout the slide and there should be no precipitation of stained particles. Identification of various leukocytes a good theoretical knowledge of the characteristic features of different leukocytes is essential before proceeding to identify them under the microscope. Follow the criteria for identification of various leukocytes. Cell size, nuclear characteristics, size, shape, chromatin pattern, cytoplasmic characteristics, color of background cytoplasm, Presence or absence of visible granules. Color and size of granules. Nucleus to cytoplasmic ratio. Tips to categorize leukocytes. Note, first look for granules in the cytoplasm. If present, it could be neutrophil, eosinophil, or basophil. If the granules are fine, small, and abundant, neutrophil, most abundant. If the granules are coarse or less in number and bright red, 
eosinophil lesser number. If the granules are large bluish black and also overlying the nucleus, basophil rare. Neutrophil generally multilobed, one to five lobes. Eosinophil generally bilobed. Note: cell more than two nuclear lobes with fine granules is a neutrophil. A bilobed granular should be distinguished on the basis of cell size. Eosinophils are generally larger than neutrophil and contain bright red coarse granules which are less in number. If granules absent in cytoplasm, lymphocyte, nucleus to cytoplasmic ratio is greater, that is, nucleus occupies a larger volume as compared to cytoplasm. Small, size closer to size of adjacent RBC. Large, larger than adjacent RBC. Monocytes. Size, almost double the adjacent RBCs. Nucleus, bean or kidney or oval shaped. Nucleus to cytoplasm ratio, 1 is to 1. Nucleus occupies the same volume as the cytoplasm. A large agranular cell. Lymphocyte. Monocyte. These cells should be differentiated on the basis of shape of nucleus and nucleus to cytoplasmic ratio. Lymphocyte has round-shaped nucleus and high nucleus to cytoplasmic ratio in contrast monocyte has bean or kidney or oval nucleus and 1 is to 1 nucleus to cytoplasmic ratio. Tips to categorize leukocytes are tabulated here. Counting of the different types of leukocytes. Ideally, all the cells should be counted in a single strip running the length of the smear, proceeding from apex to base. Note, there is non-uniform distribution of white cell in a smear with larger leukocytes concentrated near the edges and lymphocytes scattered throughout. 